Welcome to Mormon Book Reviews, where an evangelical encounters the Restoration. I'm your host, Stephen Pinecker, and I wanted to tell you folks, one of the most important voices of the Restoration is my friend John here. And he literally 10 minutes ago contacted me to say, Steve, I have a breaking news story. I literally was going to tape an interview on a, my other Zoom channel, and uh, they're actually, we're, they we're delaying that because we have a breaking news story. I'm just gonna let you speak for yourself, sir. Introduce yourself to the audience, give a little bit of your background and tell us what the big news story is. Hi, Steve, I'm John Hycheck. And uh, for over 50 years, I've been involved in this space, mm -hmm. uh, Independence, Missouri. Uh, my family first came here in 1973 and uh, I've been involved in contested Mormon history. And since, uh, since 1981, I've been involved in rare Latter-day Saint documents and rare Mormon books and other material culture. So I'm uh, heavily vested in uh, Mormon history. I'm a stakeholder uh, in the outcome of certain things like rare documents and rare, uh, you know, our founding, our founding documents I'm talking about, like the Book of Mormon manuscript or other translation manuscripts. And I'm uh, interested in, in invested in our sacred spaces. So the story is the uh, that I'm going to share with you is the temple has been sold, and uh, behind me you can see the uh, Community of Christ World Headquarters. Community of Christ uh, was formerly the uh, reorganized Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints since 1860. And my phone is blowing up because of the news, okay. so I'm sorry for that. Um, what do you want to know, Steve? Okay, so uh, you said the temple, Kirtland the temple, temple, the Kirtland Temple in Kirtland, Ohio, which was the, the, the people who have owned it since the 19th century, was the Reorganized Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, now called the Community of Christ. You're telling me, to my audience exclusively, that it has been sold? It has been sold. You will see uh, more information within hours or days or a couple of weeks, maybe, but probably today. Um, I put in a $100 million offer 15 days ago. I put in a written offer. I had financing lined up. Uh, they acknowledged my offer in writing. Uh, I haven't heard anything uh, since they acknowledged the offer, and I'm presuming I was outbid. Well, how did, first, first of all, how did you know that the, the, did you know that it was for sale and that you put a bid on it? Is How did you even find out that it was for sale in the first place? Oh, oh John, you're muted. You're, you're, you got to turn your microphone back on. Okay. So how, how did you know that was for sale? Um, I didn't know it was for sale. I knew it could be for sale. Okay. And so I put in an offer knowing that it could be bought. Okay. And so you're saying, so, but you know now for a fact that they have now actually sold the, the, the facility. What are you basing this on? I just know this, Steve. <laughs> okay, so so you're you're putting your neck on the line. You're coming here on Mormon Book Reviews, and you are telling us that the Kirtland Temple has been sold, presumably to the Church of Jesus Christ Latter Day Saints, headquartered in Salt Lake City, Utah. Is that what you're saying, sir? Yes. Okay. So, uh, uh, John, uh, this is an extraordinary story, and I I want you to add some more color to this. Uh, any more details that you would like to share with my audience about this remarkable historic event? Well, you know, for a long time, the reorganized church has been in financial trouble. They were not able to cover their legal requirements uh, for their for their retirement funds. And I'm not an expert in in that kind of trust law, but uh, they they needed the money. And so they've been selling things in chunks. They wanted to raise, uh, you know, one hundred million dollars or more, one hundred and twenty million dollars, uh, actually. And they had substantial investments uh, in campgrounds, in uh, resort communities. They had uh, the auditorium here behind me. They've got their own temple, uh, uh, the spiral behind me. Uh, they've got the Kirtland Temple, the Nauvoo properties. And when I say the Nauvoo properties, I mean, and these are being sold. Uh, they have the Joseph Smith's executive mansion, of course, the mansion house, we call it the uh, homestead in Nauvoo, the uh, Nauvoo house, which was prophesied by Revelation in 1841 and must be built and hasn't been completed yet. 
um, the houses of all the fir first presidency, so including uh, Sidney Rigdon's house, uh, which stands in Nauvoo, and Hiram Smith's house, which is a home site mm -hmm. foundation. Okay, and and just so you know, John, my phone is exploding right now as we speak now, too. Okay, so the word is getting out there. So just a bit to let you know, folks, one of the largest single con uh, uh, transactions ever made for a rare document was when the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints spent uh, $25, 30000000 million for the uh, printer's manuscript of the Book of Mormon. I had asked my sources that are connected to independence. I thought, okay, that this this must have really helped put them on solid ground. And this person said, no, all it did was buy time for the community of Christ. And so apparently the, right. they there paid are... 35 million for the Book of Mormon manuscript. They paid a similar amount for a large uh, grouping of historic properties uh, sometime before that, uh, where they sold Hans Mill and uh, the Joseph Smith home site in Kirtland and a large uh, uh, tens of thousands of acres, I think it was uh, here in Independence, Missouri, uh, farmland. Yeah. Uh, and that got them a similar amount, but uh, they weren't quite able to reach that. They've sold some of the uh, some of the other things, okay. but uh, it wasn't enough. This now puts them over their $120 million goal by, I'm sure, a large amount. I told them the temple was worth $250 million and that I would pay $100 million. Okay. And I well, had... I had this is the thing, you know, first of all, I have sources in the community of Christ, and they had told me that they had uh, assets of campgrounds in California, that they would probably sell those campgrounds before they'd sell the Kirtland Temple. Apparently, they put some, I don't know, feelers out. I don't know if those have been sold. The strategy was to sell those campgrounds before they would sell the Kirtland Temple. I was under the impression that the Kirtland Temple would be one of their last things that they'd ever let go. Now, the question, the implications here, John, is what we saw was when the Mormon Church rebuilt the Nauvoo Temple, they closed it to the public and made it a regular temple. A lot of people's concerns are is that the Kirtland temple will no longer be a historic site that the church of jesus christ of latter-day saints may actually convert it into a mormon temple therefore keeping uh the public from being able to visit this historic site is that a concern that you share it's absolutely a concern so i'm from a third view of mormonism yeah and i'm with james strang's group that settled in wisconsin and michigan in the 1840s and 1850s so i'm a stakeholder in this and very concerned and i was concerned i did a uh i did a John, John, unmute your phone. Your mute. Your phone just muted. Your phone. Your phone is muted. John, you got to un unmute your phone. Unmute your phone. He's, he's. Of course, his phone is probably exploding right now, folks. My phone has been ringing. Un unmute your phone, John. And again, this is this is what happens when you do. There we go. Okay, continue talking, John. Steve, I can't hear you. Um, uh, I can hear you. I can hear you talk. Just talk. Okay, you can hear me. Yep. Okay, so yeah, yeah, that's a concern. The Nauvoo Temple was not rebuilt according to the original plans, neither inside nor outside. They significantly modified its appearance and uh, especially on the inside. So my concern is in the Kirtland Temple, will they do something like they've done in, in both Provo temples, the Provo City Center Temple, uh, which was a tabernacle that burned and they lifted it up and they poured you know, concrete underneath it and put in modern facilities or the Provo temple that they're just preparing to tear down now and rebuild uh, over the top of the old one. And the, uh, and the, and the Salt Lake temple, you know, has been utterly uh, taken apart. They've, they've taken the spires off and the angel and the, the sphere on the top and the roof off. And they've put all of the woodwork, the trim, the millwork, uh, the molding of the Salt Lake Temple through a wood chipper, you know, and uh, and lifted that up essentially not all at once, but they've they've gone under the entire foundation of that, removed it from its sandy foundation, and uh, so um, the problem is, will they do the same thing to the Kirtland Temple? I know they have concerns about earthquakes; they're not that far from the New Madrid Fault and other earthquakes, and so. You know, we historians are very concerned that they will lift up the Kirtland Temple and pour a concrete parking garage underneath it and modern restrooms and locker rooms and uh, significantly change it uh, for their modern ordinances, which were not, uh, which are anachronistic to the Kirtland period of uh, 1833 to 1836 when that temple was built and uh, it was sort of used through the 1840s. Uh, 
a little later too. And James Strang held title to that temple in 1846. Uh, eventually the reorganized church uh, gained possession of it. Uh, the, the county sold it in 1860. James Strang died in 56, 1856, and the county sold it for taxes in 1860. Joseph Smith III acquired it for $150 and a quit claim deed in 1862. And then uh, he tried to sell it to pay his own personal debts. Um, by the way, the, the LDS church, uh, the, the Utah Mormons tried to sell the both temples, the Nauvoo temple and the Kirtland temple uh, in 1846-47. So this is not unprecedented to try to sell the temple. Yeah. The um the the reorganized church sued in a friendly lawsuit, sued their own prophet, Joseph Smith the third in eighteen seventy-five about uh to clear up the title because when he tried to sell it to pay his personal debts, uh it became clear that the title was deficient. And so the church sued him to try to to try to get clear title and he forfeited it. Uh, and the judge, nonetheless, to, a lot of people don't know this, dismissed that case. Uh, the plaintiff, the church, uh, reorganized church, wrote a court order for the judge to sign, and he didn't sign it, and he dismissed the case. The reorganized church for a century and a half has used that case as some legitimacy that they're the legal successor of the church. But of course, uh, the, the, uh, the order was never signed. Instead, they held it by squatter's rights until about 1901. And uh, eventually that title got cleared up in 1901 through adverse possession, or they were able to get a title based on them having had it for over for about 40 years. Oh. So, but I still think of myself as a stakeholder in it. And uh, I see the reorganized church, the community of Christ as the curators or caretakers or custodians, stewards of this building and our other shared heritage. So Steve, to me, this feels like the United States just announced that they're selling the Declaration of Independence and they're selling the Constitution, you know, the Book of Mormon manuscript and the Bible manuscript, and now they're selling the White House and the Capitol. Um, when they sell our sacred spaces, they're selling Joseph Smith's burial site, presumably. Uh, so, and, and then doing that to pay for the, for the salaries of the retired presidents. That's the analogy mm, I like okay. to share with you. So that's what it feels like to me. This was my heritage being sold as if my constitution and and mm -hmm. uh, I don't own the constitution and the and the Declaration of Independence, but they're mine, right? You yep. see what I mean? Uh, my ancestors shared in that uh, experience and that and consider that to be a sacred space. Okay, John, can you hear me? I'm assuming yes, that oh, you can. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you so much for giving us this history. History is being broken here on Mormon Book Reviews. This is the first confirmation from a very reliable source. John is putting his neck out on the line, telling us this story. So I have no reason to believe that this is not rock solid. This is happening. And this is an amazing story. And I want to thank you so much for John for coming to my platform to share this story with the wider restoration, which is what we do here. We talk to the full restoration. And was there any final words you'd like to sh uh, share with my audience? No, that's it, Steve. Okay. Well, John, thank you so much for coming on, folks. We've uh, we've done some stuff about selling the Provo Temple. We've done we've been talking about the selling of these different sites. Uh, th this is a continuing breaking story. And stay here on Mormon Book Reviews for further information and developments. Make sure you're liked and subscribed and have your notifications turned on because we are going to flush out this story. We're going to talk to people about this. This is has amazing significance and in 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 this is changes everything in the restoration. And we hope that we all, as stewards, we I feel like I'm a steward of the restoration. I'm I'm a stakeholder in one sense because of, I've spent most of my life studying Joseph Smith, studying Mormonism. I have a I have a spiritual stake in into the restoration, if you will. And I think it's really important that these sacred spaces and sites are accessible to everyone. And I, I we don't want to see this Kirtland Temple just become another temple that is not going to be able to be embraced by the whole restoration. See, that's the thing. That was the one temple that the whole restoration could go. And they would have joint services and they would sing a spirit of God like a fire with all the different restoration groups would come and sing together. And we don't we, we don't want that sacred space to go away. So it's really important that they that, that this is handled properly properly. 
And uh, John, uh, you're an awesome human being. I really appreciate you. And thank you so much for coming on the show today. You understand it perfectly. And thank you so much. You're the best always. Thank you, Steve. All right, folks, tell us what you think. Uh, uh, we want to hear your descriptions and uh, uh, comments and everything like that. Remember, the most important thing is this. All the voices of the restoration will be heard here on Mormon Book Reviews.